I hope that anaconda's not eyeing me for lunch. With any luck, he has other things to eat since he's a native to this rainforest. You know why this jaguar has spots? So he's not spotted in the dense forest. Since what we have going here is definitely a dense forest, I'd say this jaguar's right where it belongs. I once did a report on a taper for the frizz, so I happen to know it's right at home. Rumor has it that ocelots eat a lot. A lot of animals that live in the Brazilian tropical rainforest. So unless we want this guy to starve, he'd better stay put. How many toucans can live in the rainforest? At least two can. And I think this bird is in the right place. Personally, I wouldn't mind if this howler monkey's native habitat was my bedroom. He'd make a great alarm clock. But it turns out that the rainforest is where he belongs. Okay, here's the fact. The Black Bernian Warbler spends nine months of the year here in this rainforest, then migrates north to Canada for three months of the year. So technically, it is right where it belongs. If Liz could talk, she'd tell you that the ability to smell and taste is what keeps reptiles informed and safe. Reptiles have two ways of using their sniffer. They smell through their nose, and they use their tongue to taste scents in air. So when you see a reptile sticking out its tongue, it's not being rude. It's smelling and taste-testing the air. Well, ta-ta! According to my research, I'm a marsupial. It's awfully cozy in this pouch. A great place for reading, even if it's a little dark. What I found out is that opossums have lived in the rainforest for 65 million years. Wahoo! Excellent observation. That panda is certainly in the wrong environment. It will never find what it needs to eat here. Let's see if we can put our brains to the task and figure out where it should really be. The Himalayan Mountains. Circumpolar Arctic Tundra and Ocean. Way up in the Himalayans, where the bamboo grows, is where this panda needs to be. You've hit it on the nose. It's time for destination migration. My old friend Helen Copter is standing by. Take this panda back to the Himalayan mountains, where it's nice and cool. Congratulations! One animal found and three to go. For finding and sending one animal to its proper habitat, you've earned the honorable Nature Ranger Scout Award. If you'd like, you can print it out to remind you of your noble deed. There are seven habitats to explore, so try as you might. You won't find a misplaced animal in every place you visit. You've already found an animal here after looking far and wide, but there are other habitats to search where misplaced animals might hide. This one's a mammal, not covered in fur. It travels on four hooves with his herd. On this animal are many spots, and it lives in a land that's often hot. Where to now? The Circumpolar Arctic Tundra and Ocean. Circumpolar Arctic Tundra and Ocean! Check this out! We're headed for the Arctic Tundra! I'm glad I brought my new down jacket! That and the thrill of the adventure should keep you warm and toasty, Tim! We've just come in for an icy landing in the Circumpolar Arctic Tundra. Bundle up, Super Sleuths, and leave no iceberg unturned! Be sure to check under the water, too. There's a whole new world to explore down there. Phew! What a view! But if you want to see more, I'd head out the door. These tools will come in handy in your investigation. 
I'm Weird Owl Factovich, and do I have some weird old facts for you? Hoo-hoo! <laughs> you bet I do. Factorini one! The rattles on rattlesnakes are made of the same stuff as human fingernails. <laughs> about long distance flying. The Arctic Tern migrates every year to the Antarctic and back for a total round trip of 21,750 miles. The caribou is a larger and wild version of the domestic reindeer found in Europe. You won't find the domestic reindeer here in the Arctic. One of the only animals living in the tundra that hibernates is the ground squirrel. I don't know how the other animals take it, if I lived here, I'd hibernate all year. Check it out, the North Pole. Everything's so cold and white. Yeah, like the tip of my frozen nose. I oughter tell you that it's utterly fun to be an otter. Arr, 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 arr. That fox sure looks tiny. It's tiny, all right, but it's a full-grown Arctic fox. They never get much bigger than a house cat. Incoming! For some animals, hibernation is the only way they can survive the cold of winter. When winter hits, insects aren't active, plants stop growing, and some mammals take a long winter nap so they don't starve. Possums are similar to penguins, except they can fly. Meet the wood frog. It's the only amphibian living in the Arctic. The polar bear has a thick, waterproof white coat and a lot of fat on its body to protect it while it swims in icy cold water. It's the biggest of all the bears, over 900 pounds. Wow, I bet he'd give a heck of a bear hug. Wimbrels have the right idea. They spend summers in the Arctic. When things get too cold, they head south. Here's the thing about this little piggy. It's called a peccary, and it can live lots of places in the world, as long as the weather's warm. That looks like my hamster Scruffy, only it's a collared lemming, a rodent that's all over the Arctic. We are Aren't you freezing up there, Wanda? No way, because otters spend most of their time swimming in the water. We have a thick coat that traps air bubbles keeping us warm. Know why I don't want to be a ring seal? Because polar bears eat them for dinner. Some otters live in fresh water, and some live in salty water. But both kinds are very playful. Did you know that mammals have fur to keep them warm and protect them from getting hurt? I don't think my hair is enough to keep me warm here. A polar bear suit would be more like it. Get this. Some frogs can be frozen solid as an ice cube and stay alive. In the spring, they defrost and hop away. And when they thaw out, I bet they're really hoppy. When a puffin swims underwater, he flaps his wings, so it's almost like he's flying underwater. P.U. Those peccaries sure know how to stink up a place. They do that so other peccaries in their herd know where it is. And let me tell you, that stink is hard to miss. Woohoo! Some animals, like people, use tools. Chimps use sticks to get honey from bees' nests, and sea otters use stones to smash shellfish. As my class would say, animals using tools is cool. My, what big hooves he has. I bet they work like snowshoes. The better for him to hoof through the snow with his herd when he needs to find grass and plants to eat. In fact, that guy travels over 400 miles with thousands of other caribou every summer just to find a decent meal. Polar bears are big and they're big eaters. They can pack away 140 pounds of food at a time. The Arctic Tern was born to fish. It hovers over the water, and when it spots a fish, bam, it plunges in and nabs the fish with its beak. If I was going to be a seal, I'd want to be a baby. They're born with white coats, so it's hard to see them in the snow and ice. It would be the closest I could come to being invisible. 
Bonjour! You did it again. See what you can make of it this time. It's a rough one. Rough, rough. skeleton. An orca whale, to be exact. That was rough. <laughs> Case closed. <laughs> <laughs> 